In this episode of Fictional Hangover, we talk about Rose being a badass, Adrian being a gentleman, and Dimitri being a pincushion in our discussion of Spirit Bound, Vampire Academy, Book 5 by Rochelle Mead. everybody, welcome to Fictional Hangover, a podcast about young adult and new adult books, series, authors, and voice actors that is full of spoilers. I'm Amanda. <laughs> and I'm Claire, and today we're going to discuss Spirit Bound by Rochelle Mead. <laughs> we should not talk about pirates before we begin recording. Standard disclaimer, if you haven't read this book... Or should we? That's the question. <laughs> Please remember that Fictional Hangover is all about spoilers. If you haven't read or listened and don't want to be spoiled, stop listening to us and go read or listen to the book. Then come back. If you haven't done this but want to pretend that you have, or if you don't care about spoilers, or if you just like the show so much that you don't care about any of that, then listen up. <laughs> Yar! <laughs> Yar! <laughs> uh... No, vampires! Vampires, we need to be all moody and broody about it. Yes, yes, <laughs> vampires, not pirates. No, not this time. No. We do need to do a pirate book eventually. We've there got a couple one. on our list. Yeah, there was one or two that were looked at that are recent, like new releases this year that, that were intriguing. We'll have to dig into yeah. those a bit more. Yeah, yeah, we will. <laughs> but not right now, because we're still talking about vampires. We need to do it on International Talk Like a Pirate Day. September 19th. Yes, and we can get dressed up and everything. Yep, doing it. Okay. Neat. Good. Good. I think September's theme is uh, library or bookstore. Yes. So we need to find at least one of those before we start filling up September with weird stuff. <laughs> That's what I usually find in the bookstores, the weird stuff. Does it count if you found it in a bookstore? <laughs> yes, I'm going to actively yep. look in bookstores now for it. And I'll take the picture and it's Good. proof that we can do it. There we go. Sold. Good. Done. <laughs> Sorted. Okay, so... Back to Breedy Vampires. Yes, the only background info that I found for this one, and we all know that I read her blog from years and years and years ago, but the most interesting thing that I found was that as of date of recording... This book came out 11 years ago, exactly. Oh, my goodness. So I thought that was very special. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my goodness. It's going to secondary 11 school. years ago, though. Oh, my goodness. Crazy. Hormones are going to start kicking in on it. This is that well. Yeah. But that's what I found. That's what I pulled for today. It's all I need. It's all I need. That's amazing. Happy birthday, book. Yes. Happy birthday. You should be getting your Hogwarts letter if you're going to Hogwarts, which you probably won't be because you'll probably be going to St. Vladimir's instead. But, you know, whatever. Or the European equivalent. I can imagine there being a European equivalent as well. Or, you know, I'm sure there is. British St. Vlad's, actually. Only in the movie, not in real life. Except for now Adrian is, for whatever reason. Yeah, we, we need to, we need to talk really about off-putting. that, but we'll talk about it. We need to talk about that. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of, it's kind of a segue to my initial thoughts. Yes. Adrian. (laughs) Yay, Adrian. Mine is similar. Mine's Dimitri. No. 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 Mm -mm. Mm Mm-mm. Adrian. Dimitri. I mean, this is, this works wonderfully. You get Adrian, I get Dimitri. Everybody's happy. It's fine. All good. It's fine. It's all good. It's sometimes best that we don't all like the same things because then you don't have to share. That's right. I'm not very good at sharing. Unless it's inappropriate information. Then it's more of an overshare, which I like when it's inappropriate information. Okay, good. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, it's an all or nothing all... situation. Yeah. yeah. All of this is great. Excellent. All of this is great. <laughs> Shall we overshare the summary details? Oh my gosh, oh, yes we should. <laughs> <laughs> Since we were last with Rose, she has started getting weekly letters from Strigoi Dimitri, full of love and violence and promises of death. 
<laughs> These are nice letters. <laughs> she and Lissa have been talking, and they kind of have plans to break Victor fucking goddamn son of a bitch Dashkov out of prison if they can find out where it is, which is something that they were planning at the end of the last book. They need to break him out in exchange for information about his brother, Robert Daru, a spirit user, about using spirit magic to return a Strigoi to life, which Rose wants to do with Dimitri, and which Robert has supposedly done. Lissa has been practicing with charming objects with her spirit magic, and it's not going so well. Also, in the time between books, Adrian, Adrian, Adrian wrote a successful proposal <laughs> with or without PowerPoint presentation, <laughs> and now he and Rose are dating. Finally! She's also preparing for her guardian trials, which are starting right now. Both her mom, the badass guardian Janine, and her father, the Maroi godfather Abe the Zmay, are here to watch. Hey! Abe might know how to break Victor fucking goddamn son of a bitch Dashkov out of prison. Oh, it's her turn in the trials. Good luck, Rose. Rose is amazing in her trials, of course, and receives higher marks than anyone else. I mean, is there any doubt? We're not shocked. No. Mm -mm. She gets her promise mark and is now a real full-fledged guardian. Well done, Rose. After some kissing by Adrian to celebrate her success, but not anymore yet because she's not ready... And Adrian is a complete gentleman about it because, of course, he is. I have to defend Adrian at every turn. <laughs> they go to a party set up by Abe. That's going to be a good party. It is. It really <laughs> is. Scarves everywhere. <laughs> Christian and Jill come to congratulate Rose and Lissa gives them the side eye. She and Christian are still broken up after the everything last book and she's terribly jealous of Jill, even though she's like everybody's kid sister. Tasha, Christian's aunt, asks Rose when she's going to force her nephew and Lissa back together. Uh, it'll happen eventually. Yeah, It'll happen. It'll be, yeah. Rose talks to her dad about her performance in the trials and finds out that the Guardians were way tougher on her than everyone else and she was still the best. Since Abe is essentially a Maroi crime lord... <laughs> Rose asks him about Victor fucking goddamn son of a bitch Dashkov's prison and finds out it moves between locations based on the sun and is currently in its Alaska location but exactly where it is and how to get in well he does not know damn, damn it <laughs> after graduating and saying goodbye to Jill and briefly meeting her beautiful ballerina mother Rose and Lissa go to court of course, everyone else who graduated goes too. Adrian invites Rose to dinner to meet his parents, which she's nervous about, but it'll be okay. Before dinner, though, Rose and Lissa talk with Mia Rinaldi and ask her for help in finding any information about Victor fucking goddamn son of a bitch Dashkov's prison, though they don't tell her that, of course. They're going to meet up with her later and probably break into a records room, knowing Rose. <laughs> dinner with Adrian's family is mostly okay. His dad is a douchebag, but we knew that already from that time in Frostbite where he was being a dick about Maroi fighting alongside their guardians. Mm. That was a long time ago, but he's still a douchebag. Now, he's dismissive of Rose, but Adrian's mother and not-so-surprised guest, Queen Aunt Tatiana, are not. They know that Rose is a guardian through and through and won't give up that life to be a housewife. So they're letting Rose and Adrian have their fun while it lasts. Adrian's mom, though, does ask Rose to be gentle with Adrian when the time comes and she has to dump him. The breaking and entering with Mia goes surprisingly well. Lissa compels a guard to let them pass and Rose enters a records room and finds a file on Tarazov prison, including floor plans and schedules and other documents, but all the information is five years old. Hopefully that will be good enough. As she's leaving though, she's caught by another guardian and this one is the one she vaguely knows or knows of. It's Mikhail, the guardian who was in love with Sonia Karp. Rose and Lissa's teacher, who lost her mind to spirit magic and turned herself to Goy. 
Rose explains she knows a way to return us to Goy to life, and if Mikhail loves Sonia, he'll help her. He agrees, but doesn't believe that what Rose has planned will work. I mean, would anyone believe it? It seems like a pipe dream, daydream, wishful thinking, a fairy tale. Yeah. 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 The next day, Rose and the rest of the newly graduated guardians from all over, not just St. Vladimir's, go to a banquet where they can meet royals and other Maroi who are seeking guardians. Rose hopes that she'll get to guard Lissa, of course, but there are some others interested in her as well, namely Tasha Ozera. Mm. Tasha knows that Rose would rather guard Lissa, but if the queen has her way, which she probably will because she's the queen, there will be others assigned to the Dragomir princess. Speaking of the queen, she offers Lissa a trip to tour the campus of Lehigh University, where she will be attending classes soon, and even invites Rose, too. Wow. Hmm. They agree to go, but chances are they won't actually be around for that trip. What with them planning to break Victor fucking goddamn son of a bitch Dashkov out of prison soon. Like, in the next day or two. They sneak away from court that night for the airport. Rose, Lissa, and Rose's friend Eddie are hiding in the trunk of Mikhail's car. And then those three are off to Alaska. They arrive and make real plans to get inside the prison. Rose and Eddie scope it out and they decide that the only way in is through the front doors. I love that. Lissa makes charms to compel everyone into believing that they are human feeders and that Eddie is a nondescript guardian. The feeder documents they had were out of date, as they knew, but they managed to get inside anyway. Lissa and Rose are taken through the prison to where the feeders are kept and Lissa compels the guard there to arrange a feeding for Victor. When he gets there, he recognises Rose, and she tells him that she's there to break him out, and he has to do everything she says. First thing, to fight her. Now, this causes confusion amongst the guards who come to help only to be knocked out by Rose. Through extreme amounts of compulsion, they make it through the prison, passing through the mental ward where Lissa feels other spirit users being kept. Get to the office where Eddie is waiting, and they make it outside. They were, of course, spotted, and there are guards chasing after them, but they lose them in a high-speed car chase. There was no douchebag car throwing across the interstate. (laughs) That's what I was going to say. High-speed car chase. Yeah. Yeah. And it it wasn't like over-the-top descriptions of gear changes and nitro usage. Mm, Mm. No, that was also left out of this high-speed car chase. You. (laughs) Victor fucking goddamn son of a bitch Dashkov tells them that his brother it's like that's just his name now. It is. I'm sorry. It is. It's on the certificate and everything. I've seen it. It is. It really is. It's it's on t-shirts. Victor fucking goddamn son of a bitch Dashkov tells them that his brother lives outside of Las Vegas. So they charter a plane using Adrian's credit card and Lissa's trust fund and soon enough they arrive. They get a hotel room, and while they're planning to meet with Robert, Adrian shows up. They were using his credit card, so of course he can track its uses. Rose is upset, but not as upset as Adrian, who pieces it together that she's still trying to save Dimitri. They meet up with Robert in a restaurant and learn that a spirit user must stake the Strigoi with a spirit-infused stake to return them to their former self. And this happens without a shadow-kissed bond. This is all very interesting information. Mm. Adrian doesn't believe it, but it seems everyone else pretty much does. They decide to go back to the room to discuss further, but on their way, they encounter three Strigoi. And one of them is Dimitri. Yikes! Yikes! Lissa, Adrian, Victor, and Robert run while Rose and Eddie kill Dimitri's two henchmen, Strigoi, with no trouble. As Eddie tries to kill Dimitri, Rose foils the attack and ushers Eddie outside, saying they need to find and protect the Maroi. Eddie is furious, and Rose exclaims that she loves Dimitri, and now they have a chance to save him. 
Eddie says she loved him, but he's gone now. And everything Robert said was a lie and that they should have killed Dimitri because now who knows how many humans he's going to kill since they let him go free. That's the exact opposite of anything Rose has ever been taught. And she told herself that if she encountered Dimitri again before learning about what Robert did, then she would kill him. Nope. We all knew that would never happen. Right. She uses her spirit bond to find Lyssa, and she does, but it's just her and Adrian. Victor, fucking goddamn son of a bitch Dashkoff, and Robert have vanished. No surprise there. Shock! This is my shocked face. <gasps> I mean, they've just hit the casinos, you know this. Oh, oh, hey, you know what? they've gone on a helicopter trip to the Grand Canyon. They could have, they could have done that. But, you know, it's like, is it full, is it full daylight? Stay light outside. Limousine trip up and down the strip. Mm, that could be good. Up to the t- the Golden Nugget for some, you know, classic Las Vegas light, uh, like time. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows where they are? Who knows what they're doing? No one knows. Exactly. This is the last we see of them in this book. The rest of them, you know, the ones who we didn't just create a side story for, Fanfic. go to a Maroi casino and book a flight back to court. But they won't be able to leave until the next day. Adrian and Rose talk to a bartender about the prison break and learn and or suggest that it was an inside job and that Victor paid a guard to help him escape. The bartender knew Lissa's dad, so I'm in the casino all the time with various ladies and dancers, and he feels bad that his daughter was attacked by Victor. Rose hates the rumors of Lissa's dad being a womanizer, but she lets that go. Time passes and she and Adrian meet back up with Eddie and Lissa and they head back to court. Rose and Eddie get into a lot of trouble. Lissa and Adrian, practically none. Mm -hmm. Rose and Eddie are punished with menial tasks and while shoveling dirt one day, Christian approaches them. He knows that they were the ones to break Victor out of prison and wants to know why they did it. Rose pretends they didn't, but Eddie, still mad at Rose, tells Christian the truth. Christian immediately goes to see Lissa and asks her if she really thinks she could stake a Strigoi. She meekly says no, and so, despite them being broken up, he offers to teach her, which means going with her to visit Lehigh University. That's perfect, because Rose can't go anymore. <laughs> She's in too much trouble to She's do anything. Grounded. She's grounded. She's grounded. She's adult grounded. Lissa's, she is. Lissa's angry, but not really because she obviously still loves Christian and he obviously still loves her too. Got a room, you two, and sort it out. Jeez. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. While they're away at the campus, they practice fighting and staking, but get caught by Lissa's guardians, who, instead of punishing them, offer to help. Rose is angry at this, but what can she do? Nothing. She's busy filing paperwork. (laughs) Snap to Rose. While she's doing that, Mikhail comes in and she tells him what she learned. She realises he's being punished too, which is why he's working here instead of out guarding someone just like her. She can see how desperately he wants to bring Sonia, Mrs. Carr, back to life, but then she is summoned by the Queen. She's taken to a council meeting with the royal court and led by Queen Tatiana. There are some others there watching and among them Tasha and Adrian. Rose is asked about all the Strigoi she's killed and if she killed them by herself. Mostly she has. She killed at least seven in Russia but really that is a low, low estimate. It seems like Tatiana is pleased with Rose and this information but then the council is adjourned and she leaves with Adrian. Just as they're about to sit down to a meal, she's taken back to her tedious punishment work in the file room. Is the Queen judging her in front of the others to show that she's capable of guarding Lyssa? Who knows? On her college trip, Lyssa and Christian are still practicing staking, and their guardians actually help. They can't even man- <laughs> they can't even manage to stake through pillows though, so <laughs> it's really, really not looking good for Lissa to stake Strigoi Dimitri. <laughs> no. How can you not? S- no. How can you not stake through a pillow? It's a pillow. How weak what are must they her doing? wrists be? They're frail. She has bird bones. She's frail. They're just it's 
It's terrible. She needs more protein in her diet. She's she's always she like a does. vegan vampire. She needs more protein. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. They, plus Priscilla Voda, the queen's best friend and stand-in on this trip, plus all their guardians, go out to dinner for Lissa's 18th birthday. And on their way through the parking lot, they're attacked. Shock. <laughs> Strigoi are everywhere, and they kill all the guardians and Priscilla. As they're about to die, Lissa and Christian grasp hands. Thankful that they are here with each other at the end. Christian lights up a ball of fire as their last defense, but the end doesn't come. <gasps> Strigoi Dimitri does, and he takes them as bait for Rose. <laughs> <Ooh>. mm. <sighs> I volunteer as tribute. Mm. Mm -hmm. One of the guardians didn't die and called for help, so the entire court springs into action just as Rose does thanks to the bond. They all head to the abandoned warehouse where Lissa and Christian are being held. Normally there are never rescue missions when Strigoi takes someone. We learned this at the end of book three. But since Lissa is the last of her line, everyone wants to help. Dimitri talks directly to Rose through Lissa because he knows she's watching. He knows she's coming. She is with at least 40 other guardians. Damn. They arrive, and there's a huge battle. Rose leads a team into the heart of the warehouse where Alyssa, Christian, and Dimitri are. Guardians and Strigoi are fighting all over the place, but Rose heads straight for Dimitri. He taunts her, says she'll never be able to kill him. But... He brought Lissa here, and Rose would do absolutely anything for her best friend. And it seems as though Lissa would do anything for Rose, too, finally, because she has Christian burn away their restraints, and she pulls out the spirit-charmed stake that she has kept hidden from everyone, including Rose. Oh my god. Compelling Rose to stay away, Lissa and Christian work together to stake Dimitri. Christian sets him on fire, and Lissa shoves her stake in. It takes several tries for her to get it right, but with Dimitri on fire, he can't fight back. I just imagine her like just like she, like a shovel or something. Like she's got it in and she's just wiggling it around. Is it here? No, it's the leg. Is it here? No, it's the arm. Is it here? No, it's the stomach, Lissa. A bit, bit further north. Come on, Mo. Uh, mm, mm, you went to anatomy mm. classes. No. <laughs> Poor Dimitri's the pink cushion. A blinding white <laughs> light radiates from Lissa and fills the room, and the bond between her and Rose is completely dulled, almost non-existent. When the light fades... Rose can see Lissa holding Dimitri's head in her lap and stroking his hair. His face is no longer pale, and his eyes are no longer red. Dimitri is not a Strigoi anymore. <gasps> Gasp. <gasps> they get back to court, but no one is really sure what is going on with Dimitri, despite Lissa, Christian, and Rose telling everyone that he is no longer Strigoi. They have put him in a cell, and no one is allowed in. Adrian healed most of Lissa's burns, and the next day, Rose tries to see Dimitri, but the guardians on duty won't let her in. She goes to see Lissa instead, sure she'll be able to go with her to see Dimitri, but no. Dimitri asked specifically to see Lissa, and specifically not to see Rose. Lissa goes to see him, and of course, Rose tags along on the inside. Dimitri is Definitely Dimitri again, only sad. The brooding vampire. Mm. Ah. He's not a vampire anymore. The brooding vampire. Still so hot. He can't bring himself to see Rose after all the terrible things he did to her, like to everyone. Lissa assures him that Rose loves him and forgives him, but no, he can't see her. Rose is crushed at this and goes back to her room to cry, but she's still following Lissa, who leaves Dimitri and heads towards the hospital and runs into Christian. He tells her that she's beautiful and was amazing and that Adrian was amazing too at healing her, but they're still not back together. 
When Rose is finally sobbing by herself, Adrian comes by her room. They talk about how Rose must feel with Dimitri being back and Adrian is very understanding. Rose told him when they were making these plans that even if Dimitri came back, that didn't mean that she and Adrian would break up. But now, it's actually real. He understands. He's jealous, but he understands. Then he invites her to a party. Huh? What? Eh? Now's not the time for parties. Okay, look, it's not really a party. But there are fancy dresses and masks involved. It sounds like a party. It sounds like a party. Yeah. But it's a death watch. Oh. Adrian has stolen secret passwords to get Rose and some of their less important friends in. The old royal families gather together in this, to paraphrase Christian, half-assed funeral slash devil summoning. <laughs> I love it. It's their way of showing respect to the Dom Piers that died. Rose chastises Christian for this comment. Those guardians died for him. Died for all of them. And it's wild to think that the Royal Maroi care enough to do this sort of thing for Dom Piers. Though Priscilla Voda did die too, and she was important to the Queen. Anyway, the ceremony is pretty much over, so they all stand around talking. Mia joins them, making Lissa jealous. She and Christian aren't back together yet, and even though he's definitely only got eyes for her, Lissa can't help but think that any of Christian's female friends are taking her place. Mia asks about Dimitri, but before anyone can say anything other than, yes, he's alive, Rose gets busted for being there. She's escorted out, but the Queen says it's a good thing that she was there to see how much they value Dom Piers. Maybe Queen Tatiana isn't so terrible after all. <laughs> On her way back to her room, Rose runs into Mikhail. He's been looking for her and says he's got a friend on Dimitri duty and will be able to sneak in to see him. Mikhail is just as excited to see him as Rose because he desperately wants to be able to restore Sonia Karp too. When Rose talks to Dimitri, he says he doesn't want to see her because of all the terrible things he's done. She says she loves him and it doesn't matter, but matters to him. She doesn't care, though. She went through so much to save him, and while he's thankful, it was Lissa who did it. Oh, no. Rose taught Lissa how to do it. She found out everything she needed to know to bring him back. It was her, and she loves him. Why can't he understand? But wait. He asks about her being in a relationship with Adrian. She reluctantly says she is. He says that Adrian is better than anyone gives him credit for. He'll be good for her. You're right, Dimitri. You're right, Dimitri. You're right. Plus, being Strigoi changed him. He doesn't love anyone anymore, especially her. <laughs> That's like You've got a bit of a cough there. I do. I do. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> He calls for guards to take her away and Mikhail leads her out, telling her not to resist. She made good progress today and surely she knows Dimitri would have been different after being brought back to life. He's right. Just got to take it slow, Rose. Just got to take it slow. So she goes back to her room to sleep. She's awakened the next day to a pounding on her door. Adrian is there, ushering her to hurry. The council has decided on whatever it was that they were deciding upon when Rose was brought in to testify. It ain't good. By vote, weighted by the queen, whose vote counts more in case of a tie, Dom Piers will now graduate at 16. Oh, no, that's, that's not good. That's bad. It's not good. And it's worse because Rose's own testimony swayed many of the decisions. Mm, bad. It's bad. The council is in an uproar, but as the Queen says, it's law. Rose fights against this, the only one to stand up and say anything. If they're so concerned about Dom Piers, then they need to let their best one out of his cell. It's because of Dimitri that she's as good as she is anyway. 
Then, Tatiana threatens Rose with a job teaching at St. Vladimir's instead of guarding anyone. Or, you know, she can just continue filing her paperwork. None of this is good. These are not good options. Then, Rose has an idea. She says that the decision they made isn't legal because now the Dragomir line has a member of voting age. Lissa should be on the council now as she has just turned 18. Oh, but that doesn't count either because there have to be at least two living family members for her vote to mean anything. What? Seriously? What? (laughs) Rose is right when she says that that law is fucked up and that Queen Tatiana is a sanctimonious bitch who will regret what she's done. She's, of course, escorted out then. (laughs) But the guards who remove her aren't really all that upset with her. It's like a mild poor, come on, Rose, just come on. Just go, just go do it. Do it, do it, we'll pretend. Just go, just go fuck her up. Yeah, we'll we'll mess her up in the parking lot on the way out. Come on. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Just get her. We can pretend to be strict. We've got Lissa's compulsion we'll, we'll turn the cameras off. It'll be fine. It's fine. And then we'll dump a body in the dumpster and it'll be all smelly and it'll be really funny. Oh god, no. Now this, the, they've heard the sirens. They're coming for ah, us. They heard us. Ah, they heard our plans. Why panic? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Good timing. Scatter! Time. Scatter! <laughs> Run! <laughs> That was good. I enjoyed that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Moments. Presh mems. Presh mems. Ambrose, the male Dampier, possibly the Queen's personal blood whore, meets Rose and then takes her to see his aunt, who reads tarot cards. Rose was pretty sceptical the first time she had a reading a few books ago, but everything she was told came true. This time, she's told about a journey she has to go on, potentially looking for someone. But who? As they leave the reading, Ambrose says he'll talk to the Queen privately about what's going on and let Rose know anything he can find out. There's really no time to focus on that now, though. Lissa contacts Rose through the bond to tell her to come quick. There's something going on with Dimitri, a trial of sorts. He's been brought out into the sun and is being questioned. The questions are stupid, really stupid. Can you look directly into the sun? Have you noticed your eyes turning red? Could you go inside the church? They're the most basic of basic Strigoi issues. I mean, come on, people. The, the guardian <laughs> asking him to hold a stake, and he does, and then he offers to let the guardian cut him with it. A Strigoi definitely can't hold a charm stake, and being cut by one burns terribly, but would heal very quickly if he was still Strigoi, which he is not. Rose asks if he will share Strigoi hideouts and plans with the Guardians, and he says, of course, he'll even help if they'll let him. A tiny boy runs up then to ask his own questions. If you're a Strigoi, why don't you have horns? (laughs) Are you strong? (laughs) At this, Rose suggests the boy go punch Dimitri, which he does, and Dimitri falls over, comically injured. The boy declares Dimitri is definitely not a Strigoi. Everyone else agrees. He'll still have to be guarded, but he's a damp here again. And he's so hot. You don't know this. I can just imagine no him homes. like <laughs> just imagining him like toppling over with like legs and arms everywhere after being punched by a small child. Yeah. It w- it would be cute. I'm not gonna lie. No. It would be cute. After the trial, Rose is invited to a gathering at four o'clock at Adrian's house by his mother, Daniela. Adrian tried to find her earlier, but that was probably when she was having her tarot cards read. While she's talking to Daniela, Rose notices a Maroi staring at her. When she's finished with her chat, she storms over to the guy who gives her a tote bag with a laptop inside and a note. This guy works for Abe. And apparently what's in the bag is important and she needs to get to it immediately. She goes back to her room and sets up the laptop. The note said she would receive a call and had instructions on how to get everything set up. She managed to get everything ready to receive her call at 7 a.m. It's Sydney. 
the alchemist Resmed in Russia. Yay, Yay Sydney! Sydney. She's working in the U.S. now, in New Orleans, and apparently Abe is the one who made that arrangement for her. <laughs> she asks if Rose had broken in anywhere recently. <laughs> uh, yes? <clears throat> Crap. <laughs> Dang it. Rose doesn't say anything, and Sydney continues. An alchemist facility was broken into, and files on Eric Dragomir, Lissa's dead father, were taken. Apparently, he had been putting a lot of money into an account in Las Vegas of a woman referred to as Jane Doe. That's odd, but Rose was <laughs> surprising everyone not responsible for it. <laughs> Sydney then kind of chit chats with Rose about her being in Las Vegas and how it seems logical that with her being there, she could have been the one to steal the documents. Also, that guy she was with in Vegas was really cute. <gasps> For a soul sucking vampire, anyway. <laughs> the call ends with more questions than were answered. What was going on with Lissa's dad? Who is this woman and why was he secretly giving her money? It's too much for Rose to worry about now, so she goes to sleep. Because the obvious doesn't slap in her face. Nope. No. She wakes the next morning to go tell Lissa everything Sydney said, but she runs into Adrian, who waited for her to show up all night. Oh, shit. She forgot all about the gathering at Adrian's. Dang. He ignores her apologies and says that since Dimitri's been back, she hasn't cared about their relationship at all. And it's true, but she feels bad about it. She wants them to have something, but it's just like with Mason. Her heart truly isn't in it, and it's unfair. She tells him about what Sydney said and asks if he knows anything or has any ideas, but he doesn't. He's too tired from worrying and waiting up for her all night. Rose heads Burn. to Lissa's but realises it's Sunday along the way and goes to church because she knows Dimitri will be there. They have a heated conversation that ends with him telling her to leave him alone and that his love for her has faded. Harsh, dude. That's really harsh. Yeah. 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 Rose goes back to her room. Sad again. It's almost like um, it's almost like the selection, and she goes to this. And My she goes heart to her is and broken. My heart is confused. <laughs> My heart is sad. <laughs> Adrian comes to visit her later to talk about what he found out about Eric Dragomir. He nonchalantly asked his mom about something he overheard in Vegas about him hiding money she wouldn't have anything bad said about a dragomir but adrian's father on the other hand says that he was probably paying hush money to a mistress hmm adrian and rose talk about their relationship after that she apologizes and says she really does want to be with him maybe she even loves him a little <laughs> He's again so understanding and says that he couldn't avoid her if he tried. What with his addictive personality and all. He even offers to talk to her if she has confusing feelings. Her feelings right now aren't confused at all. And she kisses him deeply. They rip each other's clothes <laughs> off and are about to have sex when Rose realizes they don't have any protection. Then she offers to let Adrian bite her, and he does. So they still both get something out of the evening. They agree to just try again later, and they fall asleep peacefully in each other's arms. Aww. Adrian! <laughs> I love you, Adrian. I love Adrian. I don't care what you say. I'll punch you in the face when I see you in person. Fair. Rose Just know that it's coming. <laughs> Even years duck. down the line, duck. the very first thing that happens. Adrian! <laughs> exactly. Exactly. 
Rose goes out to breakfast the next day and happens to go to the same little donut place that Dimitri is at with his group of guardians. She tries to ignore him, but one of his guardians asks if she's going to the council meeting today. Yes, yes she is. There is bound to be more talk about the age decree and about Lissa taking her rightful place on the council. Dimitri didn't know about any of this and gets upset, especially about the age thing. Then the royal guard comes in and demands that they come along quietly right now. Rose immediately guards Dimitri, saying he has done nothing wrong, but it's not Dimitri they want. It's Rose. She's being arrested for killing Queen Tatiana. Oh, shit. Oh. Yikes. That's not good. Yikes. That is not good at all. (laughs) What we were whispering about earlier wasn't real. Oh, we're going to be implicated. Dang it. We are. Go ahead. Done everything. (laughs) Edit that out, me. (laughs) Definitely edit that out, you. (laughs) There's a flurry of activity. Adrian, Lissa, and Christian are trying to figure out how to help Rose, but Adrian might not be in the clear either. His mother is there too, and he tells them all that Rose was with him all night. But unless they have someone who can testify that they were both seen when Tatiana was murdered, he's going to be implicated too. She'll just... His mother will just have to get the family's lawyer involved. Adrian says that the lawyer will help Rose too, right? His mother is unsure, but reluctantly agrees. There's a lot, a lot of evidence against Rose. What with her threatening the queen after the council decision, (laughs) like, yikes. But really, calling someone a bitch and telling them they'll be sorry they made a terrible decision isn't enough to convict someone of murder. I mean, it's a lot, though. (laughs) Shortly thereafter, Rose is taken to a hearing to decide if there will be a murder trial or not. They're pushing this through very quickly, but Mikhail, who is taking Rose to her hearing, says that nothing like this has happened with a monarch in a very long time, and they'll want to get a new king or queen in place quickly to restore order. Sheesh. Ooh. Yes. <sighs> Terrible. Mm. Bloody royalty. Mm. The hearing does not go well. Abe strides in before they begin, acting as Rose's lawyer. The lawyer Daniela obtained for her was brushed aside. They have evidence (laughs) that the Queen was murdered between seven and eight, and they have Rose's steak, the elegantly designed one she staked Dimitri with in Russia, and he sent back to her. And it has her fingerprints on it. Rose says to the judge that all this evidence is very obviously pointing toward her. It's a stick and it's pointing. (laughs) And with everything else she's done in her life, don't they think she'd cover up a murder better than this? I mean, come on, if I'm going to murder someone, I would do better. Come on. Exactly. Give her a little bit of credit. Exactly. They're rushing things through and punishing people who can't defend themselves, just like they did with the age law. The council still votes that she be put on trial. Shit. Shit. As the hearing is dispersed, someone sneaks up to Rose and puts a note in her hand. It's Ambrose. The note is from Tatiana telling Rose that Lissa's place on the council is very important and that she's not the only dragon mayor alive. Eric had an illegitimate child and Rose has to find them, but she has to keep it secret. Abe notices the note, but she doesn't tell him what it says. They argue about her being thrown into prison for being a traitor, but Abe says that's not what they do with traitors. They execute them. Yikes! Oh! And then... (laughs) Cliffhanger! Cliffhanger! That's the end! Are we going to an execution? Who Who knows? knows? On that bombshell! (laughs) Break. Enjoy! This offering. This offering. <laughs> These other voices. They're not ours. Yes. <gasps> What's going on? Is it because we're being arrested for the murder of Queen Tatiana? Yes. Let's find no, out. No, it's just because we words. have other podcasters that want to support us and we want to support them too. Oh, Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Here's me thinking I'm getting tried for murder. Again. You're not. You're not currently being tried for murder. 
Hi there, I'm Vali, one of the hosts of the Reading Queens podcast. If you love books, fandom discussions, and having a good time, join your new internet friends as we take on such topics and more. Hosted by a group of published authors, Reading Queens is a podcast for every book lover. Every week, we get together to blab about our favorite books, why we love them, and the book boyfriends we wish were real. You can find the episodes on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and other platforms, with a new episode launching every Wednesday. Thanks. Now back to the show. We're back. Everyone go check out that podcast. Yeah. It's pretty interesting, I think. It's cool. Yeah. We have a lovely little network of podcast people. We do. It's so nice that we're, we all love books and we all constantly talk about books. It's fairly obsessive. Love. Yeah. Oh, book five. Book five, Amanda. It was book five. There's one more to go. Oh, my God. Book five. <laughs> What's going to happen in the next one? I'm hoping Rose and Dimitri start banging. (laughs) (laughs) What about Rose and Adrian? Come on. No, no, no. Adrian deserves Sydney. I've said this since we met Sydney. I'm shipping them too. It has to happen. Adrian and Rose don't make sense. They are fantastic friends. They are best friends. You know, BFFs. Honestly, Sydney and Adrian will be chef's kiss. Mwah, magic. Look, look, you are only saying that because you know about the spinoff series. Imagine me reading this for the first time, okay? The spinoff series does not exist. The, the sixth book wasn't even out yet. And I'm thinking, finally, finally, Rose and Adrian. Oh my gosh, I love Adrian so much. He's so great. Finally, they're good. They get to be together. He's so understanding. He's so sweet. He's so nice. He's taking care of her. It's so great. And then Dimitri's a dump here again. You see, the thing is, though, Rose treat Adrian really badly. And that's she not, did. But it's he's, not fair on Adrian. He deserves better it's than not. that. That's true. He does. He really, really does. But you also have to think, remember, the other books don't exist yet. You have to think... She is going through some shit. So she's probably going to treat everyone around her like shit. And that's not okay, but it is kind of okay at the same time. It's, a, she it's is an understandable with a situation. Whole bunch. Yeah, yeah. It's an understandable situation. Right. But this is where Lissa also needs to step up as a best friend. And again, she's failing it's in true. that regard. She is. Definitely she is. But you gotta cut Rose a little bit of slack here. And just <gasps> Um, don't get Adrian me wrong. Adrian is I am... so. He's so Adrian's nice lovely. To her. Adrian is absolutely lovely in this one. I just don't see Adrian and Rose as a part as a as a couple. That that's that's it. I just don't see them as a couple. I see them as absolute kick ass best friends who'll go to Vegas and have an, a wild la- night that you know they'll wake up and realize they've been in Tijuana for three days and be like, "How the hell?" That that's Rose and Adrian. Adrian needs somebody more stable than what Rose is, and Rose needs somebody right. more stable than what Adrian is. The two volatile next to each other, and if Dimitri was out of the picture and Sydney wasn't there, bear in mind I did start sh- start shipping Sydney with Adrian before I knew what I knew. I still don't. I still don't buy that. I still don't believe that. I'm sorry. I haven't. Because there's no. There's no possible way that you would ever have put them to put the two of them together. There's no possible way. I didn't. It honest. I didn't sense. know Sydney was in Bloodlines. Hand on heart. I don't. I'm not looking. I don't believe it. You cannot believe it all your life, but it's true. I have not looked at Bloodlines apart from knowing the fact that it's called Bloodlines. I am purposely trying to keep myself as ignorant as possible, and so far it seems to be working quite nicely. Apart from everybody not believing it. But honestly, I just don't see them being... Rose and Adrian are a bad bad idea. That's it. Just, I like Adrian as a person now that we're getting more development and we're finding out how nice of a guy he really is. Because before, I'm just being pushed and told and forced to say that Adrian is a nice guy. I hadn't seen it yet. But now, in this one, I can see it. And he's a fantastic friend. And he wants to be there for Rose. He wants to help. He is messed up himself and he can see that Rose is messed up and he wants to help that and that is fantastic but as a couple 
it just do, doesn't work for me. It just doesn't work. Regardless of Dimitri being there, regardless of knowing what's going to go in Bloodlines, I literally, all I know in Bloodlines is Christian is the main character and Sydney's in, uh, the main character. That's all I, that, that, that's it. Christian's not the main character of Bloodlines. Not Christian. Adrian's the main character and Sydney's the main character. That's all I know about Bloodlines. I have seriously not looked into it. I didn't even realise Bloodlines was the second, it's like second half of the series until you told me when we were starting to plan this this year. I'm purposely trying to do that, trying to keep myself. It's like the ending of Game of Thrones. I managed to avoid it completely until I sat down and then got very sad over my Chinese takeout. I I am on that blackout. But that's the yeah. bonus though, because the series is, you know, I mean, like we're saying. Spirit Brown is 11 years old today. The series is older. I'm not having to worry about these kind of spoilers being put on book groups and things. I don't need to worry about it. So it's not as if I have to go on like a major blackout. All I have to do is not look at the synopsis. And that's what I'm not mm-hmm. doing. I'm not looking at the synopsis. But yeah. Adrian has come into his own in this one. I will give him that. And I absolutely loved it when he just basically invited everybody along to the Death Watch. And she's like, yeah, there's the password. Let's go and have a party. <laughs> <laughs> they're not supposed to be here they're not supposed to be here how'd you get here Adrian gave us the password <laughs> it's like it's oh. crazy that they that they have this death watch it was a bit odd like right it's weird the morning the morning the damn is in secret this this the, 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 the society... only the royal families too not not any other not any other Maroi no other Maroi are invited to this only the royal families. It doesn't make sense. No, it it's doesn't. weird and creepy and cultish. I mean, I can imagine a Moroi who's not royalty, if something was to happen to their guardian, having some kind of mourning thing, kind of wake or something or other memorial. But yeah, it was really odd. It was really weird. It came a little bit out of left field. The only thing I did enjoy about it was the fact that Adrian invited all his mates along. Um... What annoys me about this... I mean, there's several things that annoys me about this elitist aristoc- arist- uh, ar- like aristocracy um, culture. It's, you're either Maroi and Royal or you're nothing. You know, there's, there are, or there's, there's, that's it. And then perhaps you might have the Dampiers. And then if you're a Dampier, you're a Guardian or you're nothing. You know, it's it's it seems very. You're a guardian, or you're a prostitute. Yeah, there's Those no. Are your options. <laughs> it's all black and white. There's no grey, and they're not clear cut. Even then, you know, hello, there's a spectrum in there, and it really boils my piss. And the one thing I was <laughs> raging, I was raging at the council scene when they're all like. Oh yeah, we had this vote, so all the dampiers who are now sixteen plus are gonna become guardians and they're just gonna look after us because oh we're we're so special because we're more royal and we're more royal and we're more roy and you need to look after us because we can't lift anything. Oh look, oh I'm so angry. Pissed me off something rotten. And I'm like, Well where's the where's the dampier council? There there needs to be representation. There needs to be fucking democracy on this. The Dampiers need to be involved in this. I need a revolution. Honestly, like the stir of Hugh Jackman's coming along and we're going to have some kind of like, you know, we're going to set up the guillotine. I'm going to take some heads off and I'm going to, you know, there's blood everywhere. I am going to have a revolution because this is all wrong. Wrong. I hate, I hate the concept of lowering the age to 16 and sending children out to die because you're too fucking shit scared to get off your fucking arse and do it yourselves. And I'm going to calm down because I'm getting slightly impassioned about it. But honestly, it just, I think it just rings true to so much that you need to like actually reassess your own principles and ideals and your own self that you're willing to send children off to die for you. No. When they don't well, have a say in the goddamn been. matter. They come first. They come first is what is ingrained into the Dompier's minds. They come first, not us. We're garbage. 
And it's just wrong. Just, it's terrible. What if there was a and... Dampier uprising? What was if one day all the Dampiers, regardless of Guardian or Blood Horror or all of the in twain, just turned up and went, Maroi, come fuck yourselves. There would be a, a collective but shitting then... of pants. But then they would also die out because you can't just make a Dampier. So they all depend on each other, minus the Strigoi. Well, unless you change the Strigoi back, which people don't necessarily believe in. No, so... let's just stake them a million times and kick them. <laughs> you don't let's have just... horns. <laughs> this is me. I'm. Sure. Uh, is this your heart? No. Nope. No, that's I my can't even ear, Lissa. I can't even poke through this pillow. I'm so frail. My bones. My weak, weak bones. <laughs> Terrible. I, I especially hate, you know, but love at the same time. I, I hate that you're thinking the whole time, oh, wow, Queen Tatiana is being really nice to Rose. You know, Rose has gone off to Russia. She's killed a whole bunch of Strigoi. Maybe Queen Tatiana respects her as a human being. <laughs> nope. Nope. She's using her as fuel for her own fire. Yeah. And it's awful. I hated that, too, because at the end of when Rose comes in saying, Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, I dropped out of school for a while. Kept Lissa alive for a couple of years while we were kids. Killed some Strigoi. Went to Russia. Killed some more Strigoi. Saved the school. Killed some Strigoi. And yeah, I did most of it by myself. Yeah, I did. I did do all of those things. It's just because I'm great. And my best friend was in trouble. And the man I loved was in trouble. So I had to do everything that I could. But no! No, dear friend. You did all this before you had your promise mark. Which means... Children can fight for us. The thing is with Tatiana... You can't trust her at all at any point. Like, Good she, thing she's dead! It's a good thing she's dead. But I'm still sus of her and she's dead. And it's, you just you just can't you can't trust her because it's the she might be the hand that's feeding you, but she's all it's a it, you know it, she's feeding you with a knife. You you can't trust her. So every time well, she's dead, it doesn't exactly, matter. Exactly, exactly. But it's setting it up. The note in Las Ooh, Vegas. Note. Let's let let's talk about the note, shall we? And Mister Eric Dragomir. I mean, come yes, on. I was, I was really excited to find out what you, what you were making up about Eric Dragomir and his exploits in Vegas. I well, was, was really obvious, curious wasn't to find it? out. It was so obvious. Oh yes, he's in Vegas all the time. He's always dancing with other women and stuff because he's having an affair. No, he would never do that. We've established that the Dragomir boys are all players. He's having an affair. I mean, it does. And then it, when they said that they couldn't, ha um, Lissa couldn't have a vote because there needs to be two Dragomirs with that bullshit law. And it's like, yes, because there'll be an illegitimate, illegitimate Dragomir somewhere. There's your Dragomir line. There's Lissa getting the vote, and there's Lissa becoming queen. It's gonna happen. That is what is that is what's gonna happen. Um, I will admit, though, I was really sus of Ambrose um, after he had that conversation with Rose and then Tatiana turned up dead. I'm like, mm, could Ambrose have something to do with... I don't... I, I might be playing too much into the Ambrose thing, potentially having something to do with Tatiana's death, but it just... I don't know. It feels like a kind of character that needs to... He's been in the background a little bit and then he needs to kind of have something a little bit more about him. I'm wondering if he's in cahoots with Victor fucking goddamn motherfucking bastard da Dashkov. His name changed a little he, bit. He, it, I'm not reading it, so of course it's going to change. <laughs> Can I tell you, just to, to break in with something about Ambrose? Yes, please. Ambrose, in my head, while reading, is totally Finnick O'Dare. Yes, he is. From he the is. Hunger Games. Yes. That is absolute perfect casting. That is exactly it. Yeah. Yeah. Sam Claflin, adorable, perfect. 
He would be the perfect Ambrose. It's canon now. It's canon. Yeah. But, you know, they have, like, the same kind of thing going on. After Finnick won the Hunger Games, he stopped getting paid in money because that ain't good enough anymore. So he gets paid in secrets. He knows secrets. And he is sneaking around the capital, learning everyone's dirty laundry. And here's Ambrose doing the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then the queen is dead. Yeah. How, I mean, come on, rules can plan a murder better than that. Right, and she would definitely have retrieved her stake, first of all. At the very least. <laughs> if, if Stake and go. Don't leave your stake. That's a nice stake. If you are going to murder the queen, you get rid of the body as well. You would be like, hey, Sydney, um, you know all that, you know, stuff you've got get rid of the Strigoi bodies. Can I borrow some? Yeah. Like, hey, Sydney, you know how you think all vampires are the devil? Well, I need your help with something. I have a literal devil of a vampire to get rid of. Yeah, she yeah. would do so much better. Give her uh, give more credit. She, the thing is with Rose, she's got the reputation of just going, you know, straight into situations and not seeming like she's thinking about them but actually there's a lot of strategy involved in that as well um Mm -hmm. she doesn't go half cocked she does in minor situations but if it's a big situation like the prison break um she thinks about it she considers what's going on and she will enlist the necessary help that needs to get the job done yeah I really liked the prison break, by the way. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Yes. Just imagine them, like, showing up, wearing crooked wigs, <laughs> stumbling around, pretending, you know, to be looking for their next vampire bite. Oh, I just really need to go to fitting right now. Is this the cosplay? And then... <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Sorry, the cosplay for this one is not going to be so involved because I'll be out of town. So, sorry. But I'm still doing something. Don't worry about it. It's good. It'll be fine. But no, probably no crooked shambling wigs. Shambling wigs. Shambling wigs. Is what I just said. Um, No, that won't be it. But I did love that. And I love that that's a, a valid test of Lissa's charming ability. Yeah. She charmed those rings, and nobody knew who they were. It, you're certainly seeing Lissa's powers grow exponentially here. And I like the fact yeah. that the plan was relatively simple, and it played to the strength so much. In, they didn't go in, yep. guns blazing. I was worried that was what's going to happen at the end of book four, that it was going to be a big blowout scene. Uh, but no, they went in quiet, they played to Lissa's magical strengths, they got the job done, and I like that a lot. It's a shame that their paperwork and stuff wasn't wasn't quite right, so, you know, that builds a little bit of suspense from the very beginning, like, is this even going to work? Because we've got really old paperwork, and they're like, why do you even have paper? We do all this digitally now. What is this old form? Like, where did you find this? This is dead But then Eddie... (laughs) Yeah. But then Eddie just... Hey, man, I'm new at this. I don't know. They just gave me this, and they were like, go. And so I did, because, you know, that's what they told me to do. I don't know. You can talk to them about it, and they're like, oh, no, no, man, we totally get it. They're just treating you like garbage, because, you know, Maroi come first. The, the, Go on in, it's fine. There's a lot of discontent with the Dampiers evident here. Now that we've left St. Vlad's and we're not in isolated, you know, um, Siberia, relatively isolated Siberia, we're, we're meeting the court and the guardians around that area. We're seeing a lot of Dampier discontent. So yes, like you said earlier, they are drilled from conception that the Maroi come first. They die, they live for the Maroi. But they're not happy about it. The quest, no. They're starting to question it. You know, changes in the air. Um, and this is very ev- 
obvious in this one and I like that and again this is another book where there's some tonal changes the worry is when you when you have a, a series called Vampire Academy you kind of think is it going to be six books where this, they're in school no <laughs> no we've had what three books in the school a fourth book when they're in Russia being mass murdering killing badasses which was fucking amazing and now we're in the royal court again believe it or not i have not read the synopsis for the next one it's on my audible wish list once recording is done i will go and purchase it that's how i'll be working it <laughs> um so i'm looking forward to finding out what's gonna happen i mean i mean it's gonna be obvious rose is not going to be done for tatiana's murder if she is it ain't gonna stick Lissa has to find out about a sibling. She's going to take her place in court. She's going to become the queen. All hail the queen. That's and she better get back together with Christian. That's going to have to happen. So that has to happen. Notice, I'm not saying anything. No, not revealing anything with my face. I mean, don't play poker. That is a suggestion. Possibly a life tip. But yeah. <laughs> Can we Do you know what's something else that I loved? I'm hoping it's going to be the same thing I'm thinking of. Go for it. Does it have anything to do with Abe yes! being just fantastic? Yes! <laughs> I love Abe. <laughs> I love Abe so much. I love that he's finally been revealed <laughs> to be Rose's dad. And that and is now... in so much. I'm so glad about that. Yeah. yeah, he's like, oh, well, now that you know I'm your dad, I'm just going to insert myself into your life in any way I possibly can. <laughs> oh, you're accused of murder? Well, I'm your lawyer now. You have a boyfriend? I'm going to have a talk. I will disembowel him. <laughs> I love it. I got complete, like, Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney kind of <laughs> feels. From that but book. he's a real attorney. <laughs> yeah, that that's what crime lords have to do. They have to go to law school to know how to break the laws. That's what, that's, that's the progression. <laughs> I love Abe. Abe I is really fantastic. I adore him. I'm glad that we got introduced to him the way that we did. It's like, it's a Jack Sparrow kind of entrance book book form. Like, you know, this this is how you're at. This is how I want my characters to be introduced. Crime Lords. <laughs> With a heart. And, and Crime Lords. And fabulous scarves. Mob bosses. <laughs> scarves and earrings. Yes. He's probably wearing eyeliner too. If he's not, I'm disappointed. Yeah. He will. Yep. I love him, though. I love Abe. It, he's really... He's a good dad. For someone who hasn't been involved in his daughter's life up until she's turned 18. That we know he's of. He's a good guy. He's a good, quote, guy, quote, crime lord. Hey, to get dad of the year doesn't mean that you have to be nice to other people. Right. And he's someone good to have in your corner when you get up to shit all the time. Oh, if you if you need to get up to some hijinks, you need Abe in your corner. See, I, I wonder how much Abe has been quietly behind the scenes helping Rose. Like, the two years that her and Lissa spent out in the world, it honestly wouldn't surprise me if Abe was keeping tabs on them. Oh, probably. You know, it, he's sneaking around in the background, like dispatching the Strigoi who come after him. <laughs> he's got his like hired goons that are with him all the time. Like, hey, shit, there's a Strigoi over there, and that's my daughter right over there. Can you go kill that guy? Which is without her knowing exactly. Though. Which is why they didn't meet the Strigoi they did while they were out for two years. You know, it, yeah, it was, t- it was all Abe. It was all Abe, exactly. You know, he, he, he got the report cards through and he's like, oh man, B's across the board apart from kicking ass, you got an A. You know, you know, I can see you getting the, the secondary report card. He's not allowed to sign off for field trips. But yeah, he, he, he'll be kept appraised. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. I really like when he, he showed up at her trials, like the Guardian trials in the very beginning. I mean, not not the, uh, the trial hey, for murder. I'm your attorney, Abe. Yeah. 
Right, not that one. The Guardian Trials. I love that he was there in the audience watching. Yes. Thought it was adorable, then throws a graduation party. Adorable. You cannot tell me he didn't have the form, like, pointy finger, which, like, had the number one, hashtag number one rolls on it. Oh, he probably did, except for it wasn't a number one, it was a middle finger, and he's just... Yeah. (laughs) They're just flipping everyone off. Completely, completely. I was going to say, I really like the fact that Rose actually got a harder trial than everybody else because it would have been an absolute yeah. cakewalk if she hadn't. Uh, but she didn't yeah. obviously realise at the point in that kind of aha moment when she realises yeah. how difficult it was. I like that they were just throwing random shit at her just to see what she could do. They're like, fuck it, we already know she passed. It's fine. She passed. Let's give her her tattoo before she even goes in. She's passed. It's fine. But they're like, hmm, let's, uh, let's attack them on this bridge. Let's throw some more Strigoi at them. Let's, uh, hmm, what else can we do? And how is she going to get out of it? And she's like, what? They sent all of that stuff at me and they didn't even know what they were doing? That's so unfair. But then they're like, uh, yeah, but you already passed and you still were greater than everyone else. So you can just imagine them standing up in like a high place and being like, just chucking things down at her. And then suddenly like, they take the yeah. one shoe off and just throw the shoe. <laughs> Yeah. What will she do if we throw a shoe at her? Let's see. <laughs> there's there's two there's two guardians like um test guardians are standing next to each other and they're contemplating throwing each other at her. Like, no you throw me, yeah. no you throw me, no you throw me. I don't wanna get punched by her <laughs> <laughs> But I love when she was talking to the other students about it. And she was like, Ah, so what'd you do when you got to the bridge? And she's like, Uh, I just walked across it. She's like, what? I had to fucking cut the bridge down. <laughs> I just walked across the bridge. It was fine. This is why no, she had to go no last because she had to wreck the place. <laughs> <laughs> no plan. Just throw everything at her. Honestly, it was like chaos, and I loved it. These are the. I'm mo- surprised she didn't burn the place down. Well, that would have been, that would have been you know cherry on top of the the cake. The, these, this is another one of these scenes the same as with like the whole Phoenix Wright lawyer Abe scene when he just comes bursting into the the, the, the the courtroom these are the scenes I need to see I need the visualisation I, I just God, I wish, I so wish there was movies or TV series for the Vampire Academy because I can honestly imagine just settling down and binging them and just Getting all the feels, getting the frustration at some scenes, getting angry at the other scenes and getting all the heart and emotion at the other scene. You know, you just, I can imagine it and I just, I wish, I wish. This is what I want. I'm, I struggle with TV shows at the moment and movies because I'm not getting that satisfaction that I know I want. That's going to keep my attention. And if I had the Vampire Academy in a visual form as well, I would get that. I'm getting it from the book. You know, I'm listening to it. I'm getting it from the book. I'm really enjoying it. But I really wish I could just sit there with popcorn and binge watch it and, you know, have you on Mm -hmm. on Zoom off the one side and we're binging it together and, you know, whoever else wants to join in. I can hear Constance screaming that she would join in for this and just sit and just watch it and just have a good time. And uh, I'm gutted. I'm absolutely gutted it didn't get past the first movie. Every time we talk it, about it. It just doesn't make sense. Because even though... Even though Dimitri was a doughy motherfucker... Yeah. I feel like I have to say that in every episode, or it's not a true Vampire Academy episode. Yeah. I still would have watched him as Dimitri for the rest of the series. It would have been fine. But I just... I don't understand. Because it was true to the book. It was funny. It was entertaining. Like why yeah it deserved so much better it really did it really really did <sighs> the the one thing Shame. from the first book that i really wish would either find something out or go in a bit de- more depth is um ms carp and we meet her partner in this one but i keep expecting her to turn up and mean this big bag strugoi and i'm hoping it happens in the next one like Cover your face. Remember, I'm not looking. I'm not looking. I just, I need Ms. Carp to actually turn up and be something. 
I mean, in the end of the movie, you pan back to the cave and there she is with the massive amount of Strigoi army behind her. So it's almost as if they've gone, right, we're going to do the book one and we're going to do it perfectly. But then we're going to miss <laughs> books two, three, four, and five. And we're going to go straight to six. And we're going to go to this chapter in six where it's Ms. Carp and her army of Strigoi who are going to attack the court. That's where we're going to go. And it's like, no, there's content though. There's content and context and all of the other bits and pieces that you need to keep in the middle. So I, I would love for Ms. Carp to have that resolution in the next one. Um, but I honestly don't know if that's going to gonna happen or not. And that's something I've wanted to have all the way through the series. She was a character that was intriguing in the first one. And then I feel like I've been left hanging with her. Well, at least... At least her name comes up in this one. Which is why it makes me think it's going to happen. If her name hadn't come up, I probably would have just written it off that it isn't going to happen anymore. But yeah, that's kind of... Yeah, it's kind of like... It's kind of like in Eye of the Shitstorm when they mentioned Carlos. Like, yeah, he's got to come back, right? Yeah. He's got to come back. Yeah, the standing in front of the mirror with the candle going Ms. Carp, Ms. Carp, Ms. Carp. And she's going to burst through and then bees are going to come out of her mouth. We can only hope. That's a Strigoi <laughs> power. Yeah, bee mouth. <laughs> Candyman is a Strigoi. Everyone it's canon pay now. attention to this. It's canon now. It is. So other than... Miss Carp showing up with bees in her mouth. Yes. Were you surprised by anything? <laughs> Tatiana not being a total bitch, but still being sus. Yes. Yeah, I'm I was also surprised about Queen Tatiana. I'm upset with Rose that she didn't catch on sooner that Tatiana was fucking up to something. Yeah. But then there was the note at the end from Tatiana. This is also shocking. Yeah. Yeah. Was she on her side all along? Murdered. <laughs> Concerning that note as well, I think the other thing, and, and, and Rose not picking up on it straight away, again, with Rose not picking up on there being a potential illegitimate Dragomir and just kind of dismissing it straight off the bat, I was... It was a slap in the face, obvious. It it didn't feel like a purposeful red herring. It felt like it was put there. There is this piece of information. You need to remember it. There is a secondary piece of information. You need to remember it because it's being very obviously said. Like if somebody is literally, it's in bold, it's underlined, it's in a different funky font because you need to pay attention to this piece of information. And Rose didn't pick up on it. Well, you know, in the summary, we kind of obviously mention these things, but while Rose is learning these tiny bits of information, like other stuff's going on around her. I mean, her. true. You know, she, she was just, she just fought Dimitri in she's the She just broke Victor casino. motherfucking bastard, she, motherfucking dick bash, dash cough out of prison i get that i get dick bash dish, is dick my bash. favorite part of the dick bash it's version two dick bash yeah other stuff is going on around her so you know it's okay maybe that she's not paying attention yeah to it. And we, i mean i'm sitting we in bed were the listening ones who to yelled it. about it in the summary well that's it i'm sitting in bed listening to it i'm playing on the switch while i'm listening to it so you know i'm like I can pay a bit more attention to the not red herrings red herrings that aren't red herrings yeah yeah. So yeah, I okay, really I'll like give her a certain amount of forgiveness. Though. But that's because I fucking love Rose. Right. Right. I just, I like the way it's done. Like, hey, here's this really important information, but struggle! <laughs> here's something really important that you need to know. Be mouth! Here's <laughs> some more really good stuff that definitely everyone needs to know. Murdered queen! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Be 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 mouth. Be mouth. Definitely be mouth. That's the thing is though, because I love Raw so much, I will give her the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. 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 Anyway, is it time? It's time. It's definitely time. It's time. Excellent. It's time. It's time for be mouth. <laughs> Would you rather have be mouth or <laughs> <laughs> hmm. 
<laughs> bee mouth. There's 100% bee mouth. Bee mouth every day. Bee mouth or bad mouth? <laughs> bad breath. Bee. Bad, bad bee mouth. <laughs> when you dribble, would it be funny? Yes. Also bees. So we asked on social media, would you rather, for 12 hours, sort and file paperwork or haul rocks and dirt? The results are unsurprising. Yes, they really are. They really are. But again, the reason why we ask these simple sort of questions is because we're fucking on book five of a six book series. We can't ask you stuff that's currently happening in the book because if you haven't read it, you're going to be like, what the hell are they even talking about? It doesn't make sense. So, basic of the basic. Yeah, or it's too spoilery. Yes, and we don't want that to happen either. And we like to keep the spoilers into the podcast. Right, definitely. So, on Facebook, it was 100% sort papers. On Instagram, 87% said they would sort papers and 13% said they would haul rocks. On Twitter, 100% sort papers. And on TikTok... 90% 90% sort papers, 10% haul rocks. I am surprised by the people who are hauling rocks. I mean, I can only imagine they enjoy the fitness and the outdoorsiness. Yeah. yeah. Um, Should we dive into a couple of comments? We can, we can, but I have, I have words. I have words for both of them. This is a hard one for me. Ashley on Facebook said... Sort paperwork because I might find out Academy Secrets. Mm. At Constance Dittman on TikTok. (laughs) Constance, you're all over the place, my friend. (laughs) No more sun, please. I can't handle it anymore. (laughs) She's clearly sorting papers. (laughs) Today, Tesh on Instagram. Sort and file because at least even a zombie can do it. It'll be so automatic, (laughs) you won't even look at it. Just make sure you still remember which pile is which. That is good advice. It is. It is. Bree Tart on Instagram says, Sorting and filing wins. It has AC and heat. If I want exercise, I'll get one of those seated ellipticals. (laughs) Also a good plan. (laughs) Quinlan Lafroy on Instagram says, Sort paperwork. I may be a lost Maroi princess with my aversion to the summer sun. I believe that. <laughs> I love. I, I believe I love that. that she inserts herself into the story every time now. Because it's perfect. It makes me really happy. It's perfect. So what do you say? I'm not going to go with whole rocks and dig dirt because I have a bad back. And that will probably make it worse. Do you know what? I feel like I've spent hours, numerous hours and numerous years sorting and filing paperwork. So I'm an old hat at it. So I'll just do that. However, I do like Ashley's um, reasoning that you might be able to find out some academy secrets or some court secrets or something like that. And Mm -hmm. that's what I like. So I'm going to go with the paperwork just because I might be able to find some dirt. Actual, like, secrets. Not real dirt. Actual secrets, not actual dirt. See, I have trouble. I have trouble deciding because, yes, you could find out secrets. I mean, Rose broke into that room to learn secrets. And now she's working and filing paperwork. So you could learn secrets while you're being punished. But also, you're a Dompier you're training, you need to be strong. So I don't think hauling rocks and like shoveling dirt would be so bad because if you're not actually guarding someone, you know, you need to keep your strength up. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're being punished and you have to do it no matter what, might not be so bad to haul the rocks around. No, I think you raise you're a good still... point there actually. So, I mean, I think that's what I'm going to go with. Because I can always break into the record room again. But if I'm just outside moving rocks, yeah, people will be like, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you moving those rocks around? And you can't just say, oh, I just wanted to give myself a challenge. You know, oh, I'm being punished. I have to move the rocks. That's what I'm doing. I have to do it. I'm doing my steps. Get my steps in. Get my rock holes in. Yeah. You know, that, I think that's that. this is it with this particular would you rather. I haven't thought of it from... A dampier point of view. I've thought of it from me. Yeah. 
So if I was to think of it as a Dampier, I think you've hit you, you, you your reasoning is absolutely sound. It's absolutely perfect. Um, but I've thought of it from me being in that situation. So yeah, that's that's really interesting the way that people have probably approached that question as well. Haven't put themselves necessarily in Rose slash a Dampier's point of view. <laughs> and now I'm questioning how it was written because <laughs> I can't remember. Unless you're Crinoline Lefroy on Instagram and you are inserting yourself into the story and you are a lost Maroi princess, which you is... can't be out in the sun all day. No, you're filing your paperwork exactly, and that's perfect. <laughs> so, mic drop, we're yes. out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Next question. Would you rather have the same trial as everyone else and it be a cakewalk or unknowingly have a harder test and your badass skills be on full display for everyone to see? Well, I'm not going to fall into the same trap as I did with the first one. Like some kind of amateur. Ugh, Ugh what's wrong with you? I know. You'd think I'd be used to it by now. Um, I am going to do, as the badass dampier I am, many Strigoi kills under my belt, I am going to unknowingly take the hard test and I am going to put my badass skills on full display for absolutely everyone. I'm going to have all of the guardians be like, what can we literally throw at her next? It'll be like a stapler, a shoe, a random rock, the McDonald's milkshake cup. You know, whatever's just mm-hmm. lying around, going to take it on and just basically show, show off everybody and get the highest one. Oh, for sure. I'm doing that too. I'm for sure doing that too because you know, how often does Rose go off and do all these amazing things and people don't know that she's doing it? Yes. And now like you're here, you're going through the trial and you're like, "Holy shit, they just threw a shoe at me, but I'm still going. I'm still fighting. I'm still protecting my I'm still protecting my Maroi." Unknowingly doing all of these things and then still at the end everyone's like holy shit you're awesome and she's like yeah i know i do this all the time i tell you all the time that i'm great and you're only just now believing me because that guy threw a shoe at me okay fine exactly exactly nothing showcases a badass skill than fighting off a shoe being thrown at you right right i'm glad that the shoe really happened it actually happened in the story regardless of what you've read it's canon now canon next question <laughs> would you rather change the age law or change the quorum law i do not want 16 year olds going into battle for me i'm changing the age law yeah yeah that instinctively not appropriate that's i mean especially considering my rant and rage earlier that that's happening i kind of want to wonder let's postulate for a second if we change the quorum law and lissa for example took her seat on the council she could overthrow that law like veto it and then actually be a force of good so i'm kind of wondering are we looking for a short-term gain or potential long-term gain if we change the quorum law but with that that's assuming lissa takes up the next person could be an absolute asshat let's not send babies off to war let's change the, no. the age law no Don't send babies off to war. That's not a good idea. Okay, next question. Would you rather save the love of your life only to find out that they don't love you anymore or stay in a relationship with someone who is great but you keep thinking about the other person? Going to save the love of my life to find out that they don't love love me anymore because... It's not fair on the other person if I stayed with them, but I keep thinking about the other person. It's not fair at all. It, there's no basis of a of a trusting, true relationship because you're not fully involved in it. You're not there. Your heart and soul isn't in it. And yeah. there's an element of trust there as well. You, it's like you haven't, you don't fully trust that person that you're with now. Um, and if you don't have trust in your relationship, you don't have a relationship. So yeah, I'd rather be lonely and like have pets and if i'm if i'm rose have like a selection of steaks to keep me company yeah i feel like as much as much as i love adrian it's it's clear 
to everyone reading that he's a rebound. Oh, gotcha. And that's not fair for him. And I love him. I love him so much. And he doesn't deserve that sort of treatment. So I think that, you know, I can always hope that if I save, if I were to save Dimitri and he doesn't love me anymore, well, that's fine because at least he's alive. Yeah. And he says he doesn't love anyone. He says he can't love anyone anymore. So that's okay. That's cool. He's not going to, like, go hook up with, you know, someone else on the side. Imagine if he so bad about that. hooked up with Mia or someone and be like, oh, you dick. Yeah. Ugh. Then you would stake him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't think she would do that anymore because that's breaking the girl code. And she's, like, a better person than she was in the first yeah. one. So I think also with that same line of thinking, though, Maybe after time has passed and I'm over the fact that the love of my life doesn't love me anymore, you know, maybe if I don't treat the other person in a shitty fashion, maybe I'll grow to love them later. But I'm not going to get in a relationship with them right now. No. So, you know. You're only 18 I'm kind of well. I'm kind of going to waver there in the middle. But that's it. You're kind of not. Yeah. Not really do either thing, but also kind of do both things. Yeah, yeah. Loophole. The yeah. thing is, though, you're not you're not eight, you've just turned eighteen. You know, the, the this series happens in relatively a short space of time. Um, yeah, and you know, have a life. Go to college. You know, experiment a bit. Have you know, do stuff. And five years down the line, who knows what's going to happen? Gives them chance as well. Because both Dimitri and Adrian need therapy. You know, there's, there's some seriously, you know, the, there's baggage. Everybody has baggage in this. Yeah, everyone has baggage and everyone needs therapy. And no one needs to be ashamed about the fact that they need therapy. Exactly. It, talking to people professionally, like a professional, is good. It works. Yeah find the right person to talk to though you know not just some any rando in the yellow pages find a good one and you know you'll it will help especially considering all of the stuff that i've done so much stuff that's gone on and there's still been so much death and killing it, it's got to take a toll it has to take a toll yeah it's just it's murder all the time yeah Okay, last question. Would you rather witness Queen Tatiana's murder or Dimitri's unstrigoing? And if, you mur- if, you, if, if you're witnessing Queen Tatiana's murder, is it because you're committing the murder? <laughs> Please clarify. <laughs> and if it's Dimitri's unstrigoing, are you the one who's punching him? <laughs> I have issues about... The unstrigoying. And we didn't talk about it really earlier. I wanted to talk about it as one of as one of my standout moments, but I got distracted because we talked about a million other things. But I have This is a good time. This is a good time. I have issues with the unstrigoying. It was really cool. I would like to have seen it. But it was also really like babyish. I don't I don't like that he was weeping into Lissa's lap and she was stroking his hair. I thought that was really off putting. Okay. It doesn't seem Dimitri to me. I can't imagine him sobbing <laughs> and having his hair stroked. So I don't know. I, I would like to see that, but I would like to see it in a different way. Also, Queen Tatiana deserved stuff to happen to her. Maybe she doesn't deserve to die, (laughs) but she probably needs to be, you know, dethroned at least. So, I mean, I kind of would probably want to murder her. So if that's the thing, if if I have to be the murderer in order to witness her murder, then yeah, maybe I would try that. Just for funsies. (laughs) I can't I can't imagine weird, sad, weepy Dimitri. Yeah. It's almost as bad as doughy Dimitri. I don't know. Uh weepy doughy Dimitri. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna witness the Queen's murder. Yeah. I kind of took the scene with the unstruck 
going in to be like a rebirth and Dimitri's kind of got this imprint on Alyssa not like um a bond a spirit bond or shadow kiss or anything kind of like that it's kind of like he's come out of this horrible situation and he's come back to being a Maroi and it's this rebirth and almost he's a dump here don't don't put it, don't make him a Maroi so, don't do it sorry um he's better than that he's better than that he's, he's not been- gonna make 16 year olds fight for him true so he's been a Strigoi. He's come out of this whole fog. And he's like a freaking baby duck imprinting on his mum. That's that's he, he essentially, that, let's boil it down to the essence. He's a baby duck imprinting on his mum. And this is the mum. And they've kind of got this bond, which is, there's kind of this, this little hint of a bond thing that's being created between them, but it's not the shadow kiss bond. Um, that's what I read it as. But yeah, it felt like, it felt a bit weird. It, it it didn't feel like I'm going to pin cushion you with a stake and then there's going to be a bright light and then you're going to be crying. I'm going to be stalking your hair. I mean, I would be crying in that situation so I can understand the emotions being there. But the lying there would be having your head stroked. I don't know. I think it, was, it, it wasn't the visual I was expecting. So I'm kind of with you there. I could imagine like a... You know, even if you're still on the ground from having someone literally digging around in your chest, trying to find your heart and doing poorly at it, that's probably going to be really painful. But also it's healing at the same time. And Lissa, I'm sure when she revived him, she probably threw some of her healing magic in there too to, you know, repair all of the damage that she did whilst digging around with the stake. So I can I can imagine them. After it's done, I can imagine them, like, standing up and him, even if he's weeping, like, hugging and holding her. But just the head in the lap and stroke in the hair was weird. Yeah. No, I'm with you there. So, that's... We'll avoid that. And yeah. we will witness Queen Tatiana's murder slash be Queen Tatiana's murderer. <laughs> yes. Oops! Oh the my god! Stick gosh. slipped. Oops! I was just, you know, I was just trying. I was practicing. You know, I couldn't even stake a pillow. I can't kill the queen. I couldn't even stake a pillow. <laughs> Unless it's maybe Lisa, then it's I will do it in an upper class British accent, and I will. Yeah, stake, of course. I will stake this pillow, practicing for Dimitri. Oh yes, one must stake a pillow. If one cannot stake a pillow, one cannot stake a strugoi. It's terrible. Favorite is, it, is that the end of Would You Rather? Yeah, we're leaving it there. Favorite final thought quote? Yeah. I okay. have a few. Okay, uh, I also have many. We've got at least a hundred, like every other time. Exactly. I, I prepare to settle down, folks. I'm going to read the book. Uh, <laughs> He has no right to threaten my boyfriends. I'm 18, an adult. I don't need his help. I can threaten my boyfriends myself. Yes, you can, Rose. Yes, you can. (laughs) That's a good one. Well, we'll go... I have one that kind of goes along with that. I feel like, can we take turns this time? Because I have one that goes right along with that. Most fathers don't threaten to disembowel their daughter's boyfriends. (laughs) I also, like, I didn't include it, but then he follows up with, well, that's not what I said I was going to do. What I was going to do is way worse. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Abe. Oh, Abe. Oh, Abe. Don't you just love him? (laughs) (laughs) Next one. Oh, this one's quite, just quite a snappy one. Checkmate, bitch. (laughs) Excellent. That's a good one. That's a good one. I don't really have anything that ties along with that, so... You can continue. Oh, thank you. You. Go, you go on. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go down to Adrian now. I knew you were a badass, continued Adrian, but I didn't realise just how much until I saw you dropping guardians out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Adrian. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll go a little bit serious for the next one, I think. Without dreams, I have to be content with my own imagination, which is almost as good. I can picture all of those things perfectly, as well as how it will be when I take your life from this world. 
Ooh. It's a good one. And my last one. The love we shared always burned within me, no matter how often I told myself to move on, no matter how much the world did think I'd moved on. Mm. What mm. other ones do you have, my lady? Well, I've got one that is also very similar to a quote from Frostbite, I think. That which is dead doesn't always stay dead. And now we're literally seeing it because it's Dimitri and he's a struggle. Another Dimitri quote, angels fall, Rose. She's talking about being an avenging angel and swooping in and killing everyone. And he's like, oh, no, no, my friend, angels fall. I'll kill you. I thought that was a pretty good quote. From Christian, well, you've finally got a license to kill. It's about time. <laughs> yeah. Good one. Good. Good. Oh, Christian. And my, oh, Christian. I love Christian. He wasn't in this one enough for me. Yeah. My last two are Adrian, which is understandable considering how much I love Adrian. He had a lot of good lines mined in this one. He did. Mm-hmm. He did. Yeah. That's exactly what I want. To help my girlfriend get her old boyfriend back. <laughs> you didn't say it in the British accent enough. Oh, we didn't talk about his British no, accent in the audio We books. didn't talk about his oh. British accent. Why? Let's just talk about it right now for just a few seconds. Why does he have a British accent? It's terrible. It is an unknown factor. He's not British. And it was bad. He's not. It was not a good You British. can be posh and rich without being British. Yes. It's weird. It was it's off putting. It was off putting. I did, I was like it, yeah. no, I didn't like it. Right? I think we've talked no. about it enough. No. We've, we've established our yeah, thoughts and feelings enough. on it. <laughs> yes. Because really this narrator is she's getting better. She is. She does a wonderful rose. She really gets that the the rose she does. in there. It's just And her Lissa is not on helium anymore. Exactly, which is fine. Yeah. We just need to just need work okay. on the Adrian voice. That's all. That's all. Just, it just he's not British. He's just, okay? Okay, exactly. Stop he's it. Not just, British. Stop it. Stop it. Thank you. Stop. Yeah. Stop it. Okay. So my final quote, also from Adrian, not British. Thank you. Is dreams, dreams. I walk them. I live them. I delude myself with them. It's a wonder I can spot reality anymore. Oh, Adrian. Oh, Adrian, I love him so much. I love him. I love him so much. He could be in a fight with some other people for him. I'd stake a queen for Adrian. My money's on you, because I think you would fight dirty. So, it's, yeah, it's fine. Oh, I'm sure I would. And I would not dig around with it. I mean, you might dig around after you've put it in the salient body parts. Just to right. really after ram it the in fact. there a little bit. And it'll probably be a barbed yeah. ending. Yeah, just extra. Gotta... Got to take it to an extra level there. If you don't go extra, just go home. Yeah, really. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, good. Can I just say, again, I absolutely adore our Vampire Academy conversations. I I love it. I look forward to it every month. I look forward to listening to the book. I look forward to the talk. And I look forward to the book club discussions. They are absolutely... They give me life. I adore them. Yeah. And... Me too. Book five. I can't believe it already. I know, I know. Book five of six. But then at least we've still got bloodlines to go. We and do. I don't think you will be disappointed with bloodlines at all. I don't think I will at all. I'm going to get the resolutions that I demand. But then there's short stories I can read too. Sure, yeah. Um. Okay, now it's time for If You Liked This, Try This surprising no one i'm not going YA. <laughs> it's kind of like if vampire academy was on steroids sexy steroids and grew up a bit sexy steroids yes okay and also in the audiobook narration the male character bones is i mean the character is british but the audio version of it kind of reminded me of the way that adrian's voiced <laughs> badly (laughs) but it's kind of you know when something's so bad you actually kind of like it (laughs) it's terrible but i love it 
So it's a Night Huntress series by Janine Frost, and the first book is Halfway to the Grave. And this is the summary from uh, JaneneFrost.com. Half vampire Catherine Crawford is going after the undead with a vengeance, hoping that one of these deadbeats is her father, the one responsible for ruining her mother's life. Then she's captured by Bones, a vampire bounty hunter, and is forced into an unlikely partnership. In exchange for help finding her father, Kat agrees to train with the sexy Night Stalker until her battle reflexes are as sharp as his fangs. She's amazed she doesn't end up as his dinner. Spoilers, she really does, but in a sexy way. <laughs> are they actually good vampires? Pretty soon, Bones will have her convinced that being half dead doesn't have to be all bad. But before she can enjoy her status as kick-ass demon hunter, Cat and Bones pursued by a group of killers. Now Cat will have to choose a side, and Bones is turning out to be as tempting as any man with a heartbeat. <laughs> I do enjoy Excellent. this series. It's just delightful. But it is not YA at all. <laughs> what have you got? I went on a search for more vampire things that are considered YA. And this one also involves prison. So I thought it was a nice, uh, nice. you know, it, it, it's a nice tie into this one. So I chose V Games by Carolyn Peckham. And I think I got this summary from Goodreads, but I found it somewhere else first. And now I don't remember where I found it. Anyway, doesn't matter. Being a killer wasn't what 18-year-old Selena Gray ever expected she'd become. But with her stepfather's blood fresh on her hands, she finds herself walking into an 8x6 prison cell where she'll live out the next 25 years of her life. Or so she thought. When a man as beautiful as he is terrifying walks into the prison, Selena is the only one seemingly unaffected by his charms. But Varric's impossibly dark eyes are trained on her, and her alone, frightening Selina of what his presence forewarns. It's not long before she finds out, as she wakes up on a ship in the dead of night, a captive of the forbidding Varric, who seems more beast than man. But when she arrives at a barren and isolated island in the stormy North Sea, she soon realizes that the obnoxious Varric may be her only hope of survival. Because, in a place where polar night reigns for the next six months, a powerful and cruel family are about to start this year's season of the V-Games. And Selina is marked to participate in the blood sport, hunted by ravenous vampires and surviving the harsh terrain of the bleak island. And not only that, but Selena just became the highest bid on a contestant in a century. Oh. So it's kind of Hunger Games? Yeah, I was picking vampires? up some Hunger va Games. Vampires with Hunger Games. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Intriguing. Yeah. And also Prison Break. Of course. Or maybe, you know... He bought her way out of prison. It's we don't know. Read the book and we find don't know because we've only read the summary. Yeah. <laughs> read the read the book, find out, and tell us. Because I wish that Jill's very packed. <laughs> it really, really is. All right. Well, that's it for this episode of Fictional Hangover. I'm Amanda, and I'm Claire. Join us next time. <gasps> oh no! Oh no! Why? When we go Why? live, live, live on Monday, May thirty first. If you are listening to this as it comes out, we are going to be live Monday, May thirty first at noon Pacific, eight GMT, and all time zones in between. And we are going to discuss the short story "The Girl and the Machine" by Beth Revis, which you can read online for free. Look out for our Would You Rather polls on social media. Don't forget about our book club and monthly challenges on Facebook. Be sure to visit our shop on Redbubble at fictionalhangover.redbubble.com for all your favorite fictional hangover-themed merchandise. And become a patron of ours on Patreon at patreon.com slash fictionalhangover. Until next time, remember, the only cure for a fictional hangover is another book. Live! Ah! Yikes! It's live! All the lie! It's a lie! Oh. Oh. <laughs> that was good.
was a good way for us to stop. You can find us at fictionalhangover.com. Follow us on Instagram at fictionalhangover. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash fictionalhangover and on Twitter at fictionalhangover, no E-R. If you'd like this episode, check out our others, a rate, review and subscribe so you don't miss out. And finally, special thanks to Liz Emerson for our music. You can find her on Facebook and Patreon. Thanks for listening.